What we have here is a 1936 Seth Thomas uh, clock. This is a fairly simple um, mantle or shelf clock. This one only chimes on the hour and the half hour. Um, it is a is an eight day clock, uh, so you could wind this once a week. And uh, in my experience so far, it keeps absolutely perfect time. And what I like about it the most is it's never been restored. It's in original condition with all original parts. Never been monkeyed with. It's been serviced, but it's never been messed with too much. And it keeps absolutely perfect time. I could set my watch to this thing. It's that good of a runner. Um, all I ever did to this clock was I, um, I oiled all the pivots. I took the mechanism out. And um, I mean, everything was clean. It looked like it had just been serviced and left on a shelf, basically. Uh, I never really run much. But I cleaned that mechanism um, thoroughly. I mean, <laughs> oiled it thoroughly. My bad. And um, put it back in again, and um, the thing just runs perfectly. I, uh, it's just a very, very good running clock. Um, I don't recall offhand if this was made before or after Seth Thomas was sold off. Um, but it was the beginning of the end for Seth Thomas as a clockmaker, you know, as a company, in, in fact. Um, today, Seth Thomas still exists um, in name only. I mean, they slap the Seth Thomas badge on Chinese clocks that they sell at Walmart, <laughs> just like a lot of other well-known clockmakers. Um, the only other repair I had to make to this clock was... Actually, there were a few. Um... When I had put the mechanism back in, I noticed that one or two of the um, holes for the uh, screws that support the mechanism were stripped out completely. Uh, so to fix that, I took a, um, a toothpick, cut it down to size, stuffed it in the hole, and glued it. And then I popped the screws in. It actually worked. It was a trick that I learned from a, a carpenter friend of mine. Um whenever you were reassembling something and the holes are stripped out, you can always use wood to uh, fill in the hole. Um, the springs were gummed up a little bit. Um, the clock would only run for a good solid three, three and a half days when I first got the clock. And, um, and to fix that, I, I didn't do it the right way. The correct way would be to remove the springs and replace them with new ones. See, over time, the lubricant within the springs begins to gum up and it can cause them to stick but usually after you know so many years of use the springs develop a memory of, and will never hold the same tension they once held at that same position so um, I decided to go the easy way out I, um, I unwound the spring, I let the clock run down as much as I could and I cleaned between the spring leaves as much as I could with a um, with a head cleaning cotton swab, the, the nice medical grade ones. I then took um, a little bit of clock oil, and I had my oiler here somewhere. I know I saw it. Probably staring me right in the face. There it is. I used this oil pen filled with fresh clock oil and I actually stuck the pen between each layer of, sp of a spring well between each uh, coil it's really one big giant coil but anyway I uh, squirted a little bit of oil between each uh, fold of the spring and on both sides and I wound it up I ran it down for as long as it would run and by that point I had it running for a good solid eight days and then I did it again once it was wound down and wound it back up again. And I tell you, this clock has been running fine, and that was almost six months ago. And it runs great. But should it ever need to be disassembled for a, a, a thorough cleaning, which will be, at this point, it'll be a, um, an ultrasonic cleaning, and uh, maybe a couple of bushing replacements, at that point I'll put in new springs. I do see some evidence that uh, perhaps it had been uh, serviced at some point. Um, 
I mean, the bushings all look to be in really good shape. But the only way to really tell is to take it apart and check them all for clearance. But at this point in time, I have no intentions of doing that. So the story of how I got this clock is a little sad. Um, <clears throat> did I mention... Yeah, I had to glue this piece back in place. I had to glue and clamp this. I don't know if I mentioned that. I thought I mentioned that. But anyway, <laughs> this piece right here in the peak was just it was just sitting in the bottom of the clock when I got it. So I had to glue it, and um, I used a nice, good quality wood glue. Um, I should have probably used hide glue, but I don't have any. And I just clamped it lightly, and uh, that's that's all ready to go. So yeah, the circumstances behind my acquisition of this little piece, um, not so good. Uh, my friend, uh, Mr. John Bachman, had passed away, and his wife needed me to help her straighten out a few things that he had left behind, uh, you know, straightening, straightening out the computer side of their, their little uh, business, and I helped her gain access to a few things. I reset her router because nobody knew what the passwords were. Um, I helped her with um, some connection issues with her cable. I set up a new printer that she had bought so that she could process all of his um, you know, documents and such. And, um, and for, my, for my efforts, which I didn't charge her for, of course, uh, she actually gave me this clock, and I thought that was one of the nicest things anyone's ever done. <laughs> you know, I asked for nothing in return, and, and she gave me this and insisted I take it, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say no. It's a beautiful piece, and um, I'd be glad to have it. So I've had it. Uh, I've had this clock about a year now, and I haven't done any videos on it. Um, this is the first one. So as I mentioned earlier, this was made for the Tilden Thurber company. Tilden Thurber was a high-end uh, retailer in Providence, Rhode Island. In fact, they're still there. I believe they're under a different name now. Uh, but Tilden Thurber had it, it's it's one. It's not like a a, a chain of stores, it's only one store. But their claim to fame was uh I gotta wind this thing too. Their claim to fame is that they um were burglarized or let me rephrase that. Lizzie Borden of the Lizzie Borden murder trials uh fame. She killed her her parents with an axe, forty wax as the song goes. Um, in her later years, she had stolen a couple of paintings from Tilden Thurber. And, uh, this, I think this was around the 1900s, early, early part of the 20th century. And she had stolen a whole bunch of paintings, well, two of them. To me, that's a whole bunch. And, uh, was later caught. And then there was some controversy over the story that unfolds because they were going to blackmail her and they what they did is they made her write a confession a written confession to the murders and um, of course that part is I believe that's been debunked but anyway the written confession they wouldn't prosecute or press charges if she gave them a written confession that they were to promise never to release until after her death. Very interesting story. Um, but this all took place long before this clock ever graced the shelves of Tilden Thurber. But it's still a very interesting story. I guess she really did, in fact, uh, steal two paintings from the store. Um, I believe that was proven, but the confession is a, is a myth or an urban legend, or something they had made up after the fact to try to um, gain some notoriety, I guess. Who knows? Nobody really knows the real story. Nobody knows any. Hell, she could be innocent. But those springs are nice and wound. Now, the wonderful thing about these spring-driven clocks, and this is another reason why these springs should be replaced at some point, is that over time metal fatigue can set in and these springs could let go um, at any time 
you never know. So by putting my finger in there, that would what well, would be I could lose my finger actually literally. Um, <clears throat> when working on these old clocks, and I know we're jumping around here, but I just popped in my mind. I need to mention this. When working on these antique clocks, there's always a risk of personal injury. Um, I'm going to lock the pendulum in place so I can move it back upstairs where it belongs. Like that. But nevertheless, um, there's always a risk of personal injury. Um, when you're winding the clock, for example, if the ratchet mechanism fails while you're winding it, um, it could actually release the spring tension to the key. So let me uh, visualize that for you. Let's say you're you're winding away. I should put some felt on the bottom of these feet. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. Um, let's say you're winding it away. La di da di da di da di da di da di da, and then the ratchet lets go. What happens? The key will spin your hand around and twist it off your wrist. Well, not really, um, but you could be injured very, very badly. And the recommendation is, if that ever does happen, just pull away um, and get away from it. Get away from the clock as fast as you can um, because you could be severely lacerated. The other thing is, um, if you have the clock mechanism out of the, uh, out of the clock, Pay special attention to the area around those springs because you never know. If one lets go, <laughs> you could lose an eye. You could you could sever a, a jugular. I mean, you could you could die. I mean, injuries do happen. Um, I've never had it happen. I don't work on a lot of clocks, but I do know that if 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 uh, there's a lot of potential energy in those springs right now, um, enough enough to hurt you badly. Um, <clears throat> if the spring were to let go right now, um, it could destroy the clock case. Um, it, it, I believe there are some documented cases of that actually happening. Um, and also, when you're working on the mechanism, you have to let the springs down first um, before you attempt any repairs. Which is one reason why I'm afraid to work on this, because I don't have the experience necessary to deal with such uh, issues. Um, I've never worked on a spring-driven clock. I've only done weight-driven. Um, that one right there, and uh, I think I had... Oh, actually, no, I, I, but I've never taken one apart, is my point. I've never taken a spring clock mechanism apart. But there are special tools you can use or buy that will allow you to um, safely let down the springs um, to make them to make the unit serviceable. So yeah, while we're jumping around topics here, I thought I should uh, mention that. So if you're new to clocks, and you buy one on eBay, or you find one in a flea market, and you don't have any experience working on antique clocks, <coughs> if it's a spring-driven clock, um, make sure you read up on how to properly let down the springs on clocks before you do anything because you can seriously hurt yourself. Um, so that had to be said. Yes. Well, I'm going to move it back upstairs. i got to get the... Uh, I, uh, I ran the chime for this video, and now it's out of sync. So why don't we go over that real quick. This 1847 clock, which is a weight-driven OG clock, to get the chime is synchronized. All you've got to do is press this lever here, just push it up a little bit, and it releases the, uh, it's run down. It'll release the chime, and it'll run one cycle. However, on the Seth Thomas spring-driven clocks, there isn't such a device. Well, there kind of is. You could stick a metal rod in the back there, and release the uh, release the um, uh, mechanism. I love the word mechanism. It can be used to describe anything. These binoculars are a mechanism. No, anyway, there is a term for that. I can't think of it. Okay, before I lose topic, lose lose my track train of thought here. Um, all you got to do is roll it back 15 minutes. 
and then roll it forward. Okay, we now know that it ran a half hour chime, so that was the 30 minute chime. Now we've got to run it through. I'm going to bring it to 8 o'clock. And then I'm going to move my hour hand to the 8. Actually, that would be the 9 o'clock chime. Because it was I had run the 7 o'clock chime. And uh, I did the 8 o'clock chime on video. So we just did the 9 hour chime. So now it's set for 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, I can resume the clock and everything will be fine and hunky-dory. Or I could run it through the entire... Uh, cycle of chimes to get it back to the 8 o'clock position but that would take too much energy and effort <laughs> so yeah, that's all you gotta do just roll it back 15 minutes roll it forward on the hour let it run if I do it again it'll be set for 9.30 um, but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna stop it right there so getting back to the clock and its condition um, you know, it has a beautiful alligator finish. This is all original. This is never going to be refinished as long as I own it. And this clock will never be sold. It has actual meaning to me now. Um, given the circumstances of which I acquired it, I don't ever plan on selling it. Um, because I like it and it works. It's in good condition. It's got a little bit of a, a couple of scuffs and dings here and there. But, you know, that's to be expected. You know, this clock is almost 80 years old, so... You know, these are things that are going to happen. Um, <clears throat> by the time I pay off my house, uh, this clock will be about 100 years old. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it in the family. You know, I'll let a, when I croak, it'll go to whoever my next of kin is. The instructions of, don't sell it. No, I don't really care. But I won't sell it, and I'm never going to restore it. Uh, worst case scenario, I think I might take the mechanism out. I'll put a set of springs in it. Um, under the guidance of an experienced horologist. I happen to know one, and I think he'd help me out. Um, at least so I can do one, and then I'll do my, you know, after I do one, under proper guidance, you know, then I'll be okay to do more. Um, <clears throat> it's nice to have someone who's experienced who can kind of give you guidance as things happen. Um, so as for caring and feeding of the finish, that's not something I'm terribly well versed in. I do know that you have to use certain cleaners and certain um, waxes and, or whatever to keep the finish from uh, going, you know, blotto, from basically drying out and flaking off. Um, I would, I'm actively looking for advice and, you know, what, what would you use on a, on a finish like this to keep it going? Um... You know, to prevent it from, from really de disintegrating. Because I want to keep it all original. Um, <clears throat> I do know that Windex, Windex, yeah, Windex, of course, uh, but Pledge and uh, Murphy's Oil Soap. Actually, Murphy's Oil Soap might be okay. Um, but I do know that you can't use things like um, Old English. Uh, they can actually discolor the finish. Maybe Tongue Oil? I don't know. Help me out. What do I do to keep this thing looking good without re without refinishing it? I'd appreciate that. So, again, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, one more thing I wanted to point out. It's starting to sound like Columbo here. Um, it doesn't say Seth Thomas on the dial. It says Tilden Thurber. But the hands are a dead giveaway. If you were to look at this in a store and you weren't familiar with the clock's design... You can tell it's a Seth Thomas by the hands. Seth Thomas, not on every clock, but on most of them, they use the S and T as um, as hand designs, which is pretty cool, actually. I think that was a, a very nice touch. And on that note, uh, we're going to move this thing upstairs, and we're going to start it back up at 9 o'clock, and uh, I'm going to upload this video.